Welcome back to the most unprofessional sports channel on YouTube. Welcome back to Swivel Chair Sports. I'm your host, Zach Zuckerberg. Merkel here with the host today, Aaron. Don't say hi, Aaron. Hi. Uh, if you like our content, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Yep. We're on our way to 250 subscribers, so your subscription means a lot in helping us reach that goal. But other than that, let's go ahead and get into it. So in this video, we'll be doing another division prediction video. This time, we'll be going over the NFC North, consisting of the Chicago Bears, Detroit Lions, Green Bay Packers, and Minnesota Vikings. If you haven't seen any of our other division prediction videos, uh, we'll be going through the schedule for each team in the division, giving our opinions on what we think their record's going to be uh, come season's end, uh, whether we think that team's going to make the playoffs or win the division, um, and then just kind of give a little bit of a reasoning why we think that. But, without further ado, let's go ahead and look at our first team. Starting out first, we got our Chicago Bears. Last season was uh, the last year of the Justin Fields regime. Moving on from him this offseason after the pick that they traded, or the pick that they got in a trade the previous year's draft where they uh, received D.J. Moore as well, uh, ended up turning into the first overall pick from the Carolina Panthers. So they were able to go out and select a new franchise guy in Caleb Williams out of USC. Um, one of the most highly touted rookies coming into the league that we've ever seen. So a lot of high expectations are being placed on the Chicago Bears and Caleb Williams. Uh, went out and got him some shiny new receivers as well. Uh, already had DJ Moore from last offseason bringing in Keenan Allen this offseason as well as drafting one of the top receivers in the draft, Roma Dunze, uh, within the first 10 picks. So doing everything they can to uh, build this offense around Caleb Williams. Also brought in new running back DeAndre Swift. So it'll be interesting to see how this team can... Um, how this team can perform this season, given all of the new pieces that they're bringing in. So as for me, I've got the Chicago Bears actually starting the season off with a win against Tennessee, um, hosting them in Caleb Williams' debut. I expect him to kind of come out and want to shut a lot of those uh, doubters up in his first game um, with his new receivers that I think are, are fairly determined as well. I can see them kind of coming out the gates hot uh, and wanting to make a statement there in week one. After that, though, uh, I few tough games. Does he paint his fingernails? Do what? Does he paint his fingernails week one? Probably, yeah. I'm almost positive that Caleb Williams is going to paint his fingernails week one. But I still think he'll win because I don't think that matters when you can throw the football because it doesn't have any effect on the way you throw a football. But I digress. Um, these next few weeks, kind of a tough stretch of games. For the Bears, they got Houston, Indianapolis, and the Rams. I think they lose that game at Houston. Uh, probably a little bit of, you know, deer in headlights against Indianapolis as well. Um, after that first loss of his career, I think maybe going on the road again uh, to an Indianapolis team that hopefully is getting off to a good start with Anthony Richardson over there. Has a lot of pieces on offense that I think can keep up with the Bears. So it'll kind of come down to whether or not uh, the defense of Chicago can hold up in week three. Um, and then they got the Rams, Panthers, Jags. I think they lose to the Rams. I think the Rams are going to be pretty good this year. Should beat the Panthers, though, I would hope. Uh, and then the Jags, I think they'll also drop that game to Jacksonville just because Trevor Lawrence, you know, trying to bounce back from last season, a little bit of a disappointment there towards the end of the year, large part due to injury. But I think he comes out trying to, um, you know, get the team going early for once because he seems to kind of struggle with that. But I think maybe he can turn that around. Then you got the bye week. After that, coming out, you got Washington, Arizona, New England. Um, a winnable stretch of games right there. I think you beat Washington. You could probably beat Arizona and New England as well. In fact, I'd probably almost expect you to beat New England. Uh, I think in a previous video I had the Patriots winning this game, but I also mentioned that that was before I realized that I, I forgot that Bill Belichick wasn't around anymore. Uh, and that was kind of the whole reason I picked the Patriots. And with him being gone, um, I think the Bears have a much better chance of coming away with that win. So uh, I'll probably just go ahead and give it to you, to be honest. Um, after that, Green Bay, Minnesota, Detroit. 
tough stretch of games against all division opponents. Um, Minnesota, I think, is a winnable game. You should win that one, especially with it being at home. Um, J.J. McCarthy may be starting. If not before then, then by that point in the season. Uh, but then you got Green Bay and Detroit before and after that. Uh, I don't think you're going to beat Green Bay either time this year. I just think they're too good. And then kind of same with Detroit. Well, I have you beating Detroit at home. This one on the road, though, I don't have you beating them at Ford Field. Uh, San Francisco, Minnesota, Detroit, another tough stretch of games. Um, San Francisco, you probably don't come away with. They're just a better team right now. Minnesota at Minnesota. I think you should win that one as well. Hopefully sweep the Vikings this season. Um, and then that should be the, the one win you get against Detroit, in my opinion, in Week 16. Finishing up the year with Seattle, Green Bay. Uh, I think those are going to be a couple tough games at this point in the year. Um, Seattle may have given up, kind of, so I could see you possibly winning that one. But with it being a quick turnaround for you coming off a division, uh, division rival game against Detroit... I think Seattle comes away with that win. Uh, and then, once again, I just think Green Bay is just too good right now. So I think you lose that one in Week 18. Uh, and I think I have your win total at 7. Uh, so going 7-10 and 10 on the year. Pretty decent season for Caleb Williams as a rookie. I know Bears fans are probably expecting more uh, and are probably going to tear me up in the comments about that prediction. But I think 7-10 and 10 is a good, a good spot for Chicago. Yeah, I'm... I've, I'm kind of right there with you. I've got them around, you know, seven wins as well. I think it's a, a good uh, start for Caleb Williams to his career. Probably not exactly what, you know, um, they're hoping for, but I, I think it's a good start. And it's a it's a stepping stone in, in to, to the future. Um, I, I don't know exactly. Well, we'll kind of have to see what that offense exactly looks like. Um probably specifically that offensive line. I mean, they've got a bunch of great weapons, but they probably want to look to, you know, secure Caleb Williams and keep him protected as much as possible. And, um, yeah, I, I think this, this, this should be a good, good turning of a leaf for the bears. Yeah. I mean, this is the first year in the Caleb Williams era. So I don't think missing the playoffs is going to be that big of a deal. Um, a lot of Bears fans are probably even expecting to miss the playoffs. A lot of Bears fans are probably thinking that they got a good chance, which I think they do have an outside chance of maybe sneaking in if Caleb Williams, you know, uh, has a C.J. Stroud-esque type of year, uh, which I think is very possible. Um, I just think with that division that they're playing in, you know, it's not I, the I think it's not the AFC South. I think C.J. Stroud's success last year really um, probably skewed a lot of people. Yeah. as to what they can expect from rookie quarterbacks. Um, whereas that is the complete outlier anomaly season right. uh, for the most part. I think Caleb Williams will have a, a, a good solid season, mm -hmm. but I, I don't think that it's fair to expect of him what CJ Stroud did. Right, no, and I totally agree. I think that's the only, but what I'm, what I'm saying is I think that's the only way they make the playoffs is if he does have that kind of year. Um, but Honestly, in a division like the NFC North this season with the Bears, or not the Bears, the uh, with the Packers and the, the Lions that are, you know, um, pa Packers almost made the NFC Championship last game. The Lions almost won the NFC Championship ga game last year. So I, I think that this is going to be such a tough division that even if Caleb Williams comes out and puts up C.J. Stroud-type numbers, I could still see them missing out on the playoffs. So um, I would just temper your expectations right now, Bears fans, but... Don't get me wrong, I think the future is very, very bright for this unit. And moving on to the Detroit Lions, obviously, as I alluded to last year, the Lions made it all the way to the NFC Championship game and even held a lead going into halftime. Uh, but some poor clock management and possibly some little over-aggressiveness by Dan Campbell kind of cost them there in the second half against San Francisco, um, as well as just some crazy, stupid, lucky plays like having a touchdown bounce off your safety's helmet right into the uh, wide receiver's arms. So, yeah, just tough luck for Detroit, but obviously a great season other than that second half. I expect a lot of the same this year for the Lions. 
Um, I expect them to maybe even take a step forward in a lot of people's eyes. Uh, maybe not come playoff time because I don't think they'll quite make it as far as they did last year. But I think they should coast into the playoffs this year, which is something you couldn't say for the Lions, you know, very often throughout the last 20 years or so. Um, I think they come out of the gates winning their first four games or winning their first five games. Uh, beating the Rams, Tampa Bay, Arizona, Seattle, and Dallas right after the bye. Um, going 5-0 and to start off the season. Then they go into Minnesota where they drop one on the road to a division rival. Um, again, started the season off 5-0. and I could see them maybe, you know, feeling a little tired, I guess. I don't know. In, in, in all honesty, they probably, if anything, gained gain momentum and you know or even more motivated to win that game but uh, division rival on the road something weird could happen so i have them losing week seven at minnesota um but then getting that win back against tennessee the next week uh dropping one at green bay have you splitting with green bay this year winning one at home losing one on the road this one's the road game so this is where i have you taking the l uh, but then after that, I've got y'all rattling off six straight wins, beating Houston on the road, Jacksonville, Indianapolis, uh, Chicago, getting that win, win back against Green Bay, and then beating a Buffalo team that should be in a playoff hunt at this point in the season. So I've got you beating a lot of good teams this year. Um, after that, you know, dropping a silly in, inter-division rivalry game against Chicago, uh, but then finishing the year on a two-game winning streak, beating San Francisco, and then getting that win back against Minnesota. So I've got you beating San Francisco, Buffalo, splitting with Green Bay, beating Houston. I've got you beating a lot of really good teams that I've got going into the playoffs, if not deep playoff runs this year. Uh, I've got y'all going 14-3, and three, and I think you'll be right up there with another team we'll talk about later in the hunt for the division crown. Um, I don't know what they'll have. I, I don't see them winning that many. I've got them up there. I've got, got them at, you know, 10, 11, probably more towards the 11 win uh, range. Um, you remember the the season with the the vikings where everything went their way and all the the luck was on their side and then the next season nothing went their way and they, they couldn't buy a win um i think it might kind of edge towards that dan campbell very aggressive coach uh, especially going forward on fourth down i could see you know Teams have an entire off season. They they know what to expect now. They they kind of studied sort of the, some of those uh, fourth down plays and are, are maybe maybe hold the lines to a couple fourth down conversions that they would have gotten last year that they don't necessarily get this year. And uh, they they maybe lose a couple games because of that. So I do still think that they um, are in contention for the division. I just don't I don't see them having probably quite the success that they had last year, but still definitely in that uh, division title hunt. Yeah, I mean, I I probably, I'll be honest, I'm probably a little optimistic with a couple of these games. That San Francisco one could obviously go San Francisco's way, especially with it being on the road for Detroit. Um, Green Bay could win both. Detroit could also win both. So that one is kind of why I kind of just split it right down the middle with those two. Uh, Houston, Detroit could easily lose that one on the road once again. So, yeah, I see your point. I, I could definitely see 11 wins. I'm just going to stick with my 14 just because I have a lot of confidence that the uh, uh, the pieces they picked up specifically on the defensive side should improve that side of the ball, which was their weak point last year. I would have liked to see them get another receiver maybe, but um, other than that, I think they did everything they were supposed to do this offseason. So I have a lot of confidence in the Lions. I see them going, you know, Fairly far this year. Next we have the Green Bay Packers. A team that last year came on strong towards the end of the season in order to uh, sneak into the playoffs as a 7 seed. Proceeded to become the first 7 seed to ever win a playoff game, knocking off the Dallas Cowboys in the first round um, before losing to the eventual NFC champion San Francisco 49ers in the second round in a pretty tight ball game that kind of came the down. Cowboys. In a pretty tight ball game that kind of came down to the wire there. Um, but yeah, Green Bay, probably a little ahead of schedule, a lot of people would say. Uh, I don't think many people were expecting them to get to the playoffs in Jordan Love's first year as a full-time starter. 
Uh, but that's what they did. Uh, Jordan Love looked really, really good. He got progressively better throughout the season, which I think a lot of people were not expecting. I think a lot of people were expecting him to kind of come out flat and kind of stay that way. Uh, well, he did kind of come out flat. He ended up, you know, just getting better and better and better seemingly throughout the season. Uh, started taking some pretty gutsy chances there in that playoff game against the Niners that ended up inevitably costing them. But I think he showed a lot of promise. They've got a really good young group of receivers out there. Um, brought in Josh Jacobs from Las Vegas to replace Aaron Jones. So basically get younger at that position with essentially the same production. So I think Green Bay is going to be really good this season. And I have them starting off pretty hot, winning four straight games against Philly, Indianapolis, Tennessee, and Minnesota. I think Philly's kind of, you know, is still going to be a little sluggish coming off of that, trying to find their way back after a, a pretty disappointing playoff loss last year. Um, with Saquon Barkley, could obviously be the opposite, but I've got Green Bay, you know, being, you know, keeping basically the same exact team from last year, coming into this year. Uh, I've got them knocking off Philadelphia in week one and then proceeding to rattle off three more. And then after that, you got the Rams, Arizona, and Houston. I've got you losing one of those three games. It could be Houston, but I've got the Rams just because it's on the road uh, halfway across the country. Um, beat Arizona, that should that should happen, I would assume, especially with it being a home game. Um, again, I can see you losing to Houston, but I don't see you losing to both Houston and the Rams, if that makes sense. I think you'll probably lose to one of those teams, but not both. So going into week eight... I've got you at seven and or six and one going into Jacksonville, where I think you pick up another win before winning your first matchup versus Detroit, heading into the bye uh, with only one loss, starting the season off with a nice eight and one record. And then after that, Chicago, San Francisco, Miami win all of those san francisco at home so that should help you win that game uh, miami doesn't like the cold so that should help you win that game uh, and then chicago i just think you're a better team than the bears detroit seattle new orleans after that um i've got you losing that second game at detroit i've got you splitting with detroit so winning the first one losing the second and then winning against seattle and new orleans uh before finishing the season with a one and one stretch Losing at Minnesota, just because the interdivision rivalry, I think you could easily pick that game up as well, and then beating Chicago at home. But with all that being said, I've got the Green Bay Packers also finishing 14 and three, um, tied with the Lions, and I believe with my tiebreakers they would actually win the division, uh, and as well as win a tiebreaker with another team in a different division in order to get the one seed. So I've got the Packers as the one seed in the NFC as well as the Texans as the one seed in the AFC. So recency bias is running rampant over here in the, in, in the Circleberg household. You just, you have no problem just hopping right aboard those trains, do you? I don't know what's <laughs> wrong with me. But yeah. a, lot of, a lot of faith for a guy who showed really a, a half a season of, of true, really good production. Um, but he was but good. I think I'm, he's... I'm right there with you. <laughs> That's right. He was good recently. <laughs> um, I've got the Packers, again, kind of around that 11-12 win uh, range. Good young core. Uh, should be an explosive and fun offense to watch. Um, should be also a good secondary. And uh, I think they look to continue their, their reign over the NFC North. Well, I guess, on, they would just be reclaiming their throne is what they would do, be doing because Detroit won last year. But I, I see your point. I see your point, yes. They they ran the I division. Mean, they, they still made the playoff. Yeah, yeah. Barely. But, um, no, yeah, I think the Packers are going to be great. I think they're set up great for the future. I mean, the future's, as for it is for most of the NFC North, the future's bright. Um, this division is going to be hell for all four teams for some time to come. Uh, it pays to be a Chiefs fan right now because we don't have to deal with that shit. But yeah, I mean, the Packers are going to be as good as anybody in the NFC, assuming Jordan Love continues to take that next step, which I think he should. 
Uh, the Packers think he will, considering they just gave him a fat new paycheck, payday, paycheck, whatever. Um, so yeah, I think both. that both. But yeah, I think the Packers are going to be really good. Should be between them and the Lions for the division, with uh, these other two teams kind of fighting for third. Um, and with that being said, we can go ahead and get into our last team here with the Minnesota Vikings. Last year, the Vikings suffered a devastating blow when Kirk Cousins went down with an Achilles injury a la Aaron Rodgers. Um, his was a little bit later in the season. I believe it was around week six, something like that. It was around the halfway point in the season. I know he played the Chiefs in week four before it happened. So uh, started the season off rough before that, though. I believe they started the year off 0-4, so things weren't looking great for the Vikings before he got hurt. Then he got hurt, had some backups come in, alternate in and out. And for a second there, with uh, the Pastronaut, we all thought maybe the Vikings could make a playoff push. And then the Pastronaut returned to Earth. Pun intended. Crashed. Crash landed. Crash back yeah. Earth. Yeah, crash landed. Real bad, real bad. So bad, in fact, that they removed him from the starting position and uh, proceeded to go with... I, I can't remember... The, I can't remember his name. Nick Mullins? Nick Mullins! Thank you. Nick Proceeded Mullins. to go with Nick Mullins, who, to that point, had shown next to nothing in his, in his NFL career. So, suffice it to say, the Vikings were in the market for a new QB. Went out and did that. Got J.J. McCarthy in the first round. But not only that, they signed the great Sam Darnold, who... All reports are saying significantly underperforming J.J. McCarthy. So, which, I mean, J.J. McCarthy is apparently playing really, really well here in training camp. So, possible chance he ends up being the week one starter. I know there are some murmurs there in the Vikings camp about that potentially being the case. Um, I made these predictions a few weeks ago before those reports came out. So this is under the assumption Sam Darnold was going to start the season off under center. Keep that in mind, Vikings fans. With J.J. McCarthy, if he comes out and he plays well, this could be a totally different story. But I was not expecting J.J. McCarthy to touch the field, at least within the first four weeks. So I got Minnesota starting off the season with a win at the Giants. I just think the Giants are that bad, basically, is what it came down to. Um, but then after that, you know, tough, 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 tough stretch of games. San Francisco, Houston, Green Bay, New York. You lose all four of those. Heading to the bye, one and four. Not great. Not great at all. You got Detroit at home. I I blessed you guys with that victory. Um, which, again, if J.J. McCarthy's playing, could happen. Uh, if Sam Darnold's playing... I was probably going to be I'm probably going to be wrong about this one. But I've got you getting your second win there in week 7 um before going on another six game losing streak. Losing to the Rams, Colts, Jaguars, Titans, Bears and Cardinals. Uh you could pick up a couple wins in that stretch. I could see you beating Tennessee, I could beat see you beating Arizona, maybe Indianapolis. Um, but uh, again, I assumed Sam Darnold was going to be the starting quarterback. So just keep that in mind as I continue going through this list. Uh, I got you picking up a win against Atlanta, losing another one to Chicago, losing at Seattle. For some reason, picking up a win at Green Bay, even though you can't beat Chicago and then, uh, losing to Detroit. So with Sam Darnold under center, I think you go four and 13. Uh, with J.J. McCarthy, I think it's probably closer to seven wins. But, again, I made this assuming Sam Darnold was going to be the starting quarterback. In my opinion, unless J.J. McCarthy is really that nice, I would say probably still go with Sam Darnold just to get a really nice draft pick. Um, but, yeah. If Sam Darnold's the starting QB, I don't see it going well. I don't really see it going well either way. Um, yeah, you're not big on JJ. I'm not going to turn this into the McCarthy bash fest. So I'll just, 
you know, I think they're probably hovering around, kind of like you said, five wins. Um, I think it's going to be tough sledding out there despite, you know, the offensive weapons they have. I think there are going to be a lot of questions at quarterback um, and probably defense as well. And I think the Vikings are probably going to be, be looking at having a, a, a top 10 pick in this draft. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking, too. Um, again, I don't think that's going to be a terrible thing. Probably not going to go receiver, obviously, but maybe you can go, like, offensive line or some sort of defensive piece. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be tough sledding for Minnesota in a division full of uh, pretty well-built teams, to be honest. I mean, Chicago seems like they're getting there, but then we obviously Green Bay and Detroit are two really good teams, so... When you got to play those two teams twice a year on top of Chicago, that looks like they're up and coming. Um, it's it's hard to find the wins for you, especially when you throw in San Francisco, Houston, the Jets, Jacksonville. I mean, it, you just got a really tough schedule, really tough draw. Um, but I think the Vikings could maybe make some noise if, again, if J.J. McCarthy comes out and performs up to the level that I've been hearing murmurs of from training camp, uh, then maybe they can sneak into the, you know, that 500 range. But I don't really see them sniffing the playoffs this year. Uh, and I think it may be their best interest to tank a little bit. So. But here are our final NFC North predictions. Uh, both of us kind of think the Lions and the Packers are going to be the two teams battling for the NFC North while the Bears and Vikings battle for the third spot in the division. Um, neither one of us really see either of those bottom two teams making the playoffs. Uh, we both kind of expect the top two teams to make the playoffs. So, yeah, I mean, pretty similar to last year, all things considered. Uh, I know I probably have a little bit more confidence in those two teams towards the top than you do, but... Like I said weeks ago, the top tier teams I kind of kind of placed at their ceiling, and the bottom tier teams I kind of placed at their floor. So there's really no in between for me. A lot of the teams are either going to be 13, 14 wins or or three, four wins. So sorry about that. Never uh, is much in between for you. Nah, well, <laughs> you know. But unless you got anything else, I think that'll do it for this episode of the most unprofessional sports channel on youtube global chair sports i've been your host zach Zuckerberg. we here at the coast today aaron go and say bye aaron bye all right please make sure to like and subscribe if you made it this far into the video make sure to comment down below if you disagree with any of our opinions and please comment down below if you agree with any of our opinions we would love the support but other than that deuces have a good day